I've had a career of 28 years, I've had my ups and downs, met some people who were awesome, met some who were total clowns. Whether it's Scotland or Canada, whether radio or TV, I've had a billion random things happen that make a good story. I'll tell you a story, a random story. I'm Dominic Diamond and I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story, a random story. I'm Dominic Diamond and I'll tell you a tale. So, uh, I was supposed to do part one of Killing Conrad, but I'll do that tomorrow instead. Um, if you have heard a, a few of my stories, you will know that there are a couple of themes that keep appearing. One theme is nearly dying, yeah, either as a child or during my bad behaviour years in the 90s. Uh, the other themes of my stories are times I've met famous people and made a total and utter humiliating arse of myself. Today is a story that combines two of those themes, except it wasn't me that nearly died that night, except from embarrassment. Uh, this is the story of the night I nearly killed Michael Stipe from REM. This guy. Little old Michael Stipe. Lovely little Michael Stipe. So in 1998, R.E.M. brought out an album called Up, right? It was the first one they made after drummer Bill Berry left the band. And it was the one that had Day Sleeper on it and my most favourite R.E.M. song ever, which is a song called At My Most Beautiful, which again, I would love to play clips of, but you can't do that anymore on Twitch, right? record company rights and everything now. So anyway, I strongly recommend that R.E.M. album up. It's, no, it's nobody's favourite R.E.M. album, but it's, it's, it's one of my favourites. So 1998, uh, I was working for the BBC at the time and they had a big private concert in the BBC Radio Theatre, Central London, for prize winners and invited guests. And I was there and I brought my mate Sad Andy along. You remember why was Sad Andy called Sad Andy? Yeah, I told that story, didn't I? Because initially, when we met at university, uh, Sad Andy supported Oxford United. No one else we ever met supported Oxford United. We thought it was a little sad team to support, so we called him Sad Andy. Um, but then I also told you, in the 90s, I ended up going and spending a season with Sad Andy watching Oxford United. And it was a great time. Good football, brilliant fans, lots of great after-game beers in the players' bar with Malcolm Schott and the manager and all the players. Um, so actually, it turned out it wasn't that sad to support Oxford United. But by this stage, Andy had, at university, dated not one but two girls who subsequently became lesbians. So uh, the Sad Andy nickname stuck because, you know, he he turned two girls off of heterosexuality for life. Uh, one of the girls, though, wasn't a lesbian for long. And I only know that because she went on to become a famous actress in the UK. And she's married with kids now. But I will never tell her name. Anyway, right? As well as being the only mate I ever had who turned not only one but two girls completely off heterosexuality, or at least for a while, Andy was also a huge R.E.M. fan. Much bigger than even I was at the time. And I loved R.E.M. So the idea of going to an Uber fans only private concert in the small radio theatre at the BBC in London was just exciting balls to the max for us, right? Um... The gig was amazing, okay? And uh, afterwards, I was one of the few uh, select celebrities that got to go to the after show reception in the bar and Michael Stipe was there. Unfortunately, so were a ton of other UK celebrities, much bigger stars than me. And they were all also desperate to talk to Michael Stipe too. So... Here's basically what happened. We'd be standing by the bar, we'd see Michael Stipe, we'd go up to talk to him, and Emma Bunton, aka Baby Spice, would move in ahead of us and start talking to Michael Stipe. So we would go back to the bar, have another drink, and wait. And then Baby Spice would move on, and we go, all right, okay, Michael Stipe, he's free. And we go up towards Michael Stipe, and the bloke who has the garage in Coronation Street would move in instead. 
And we'd go back to the bar. And we'd have another drink. And we'd wait. And we'd see he was free. And again, we'd go, right, there's Michael Stipe. Let's go and talk to him. Oh, no, there's David Badil now moving in to talk to Michael Stipe. So we'd go back to the bar and have another drink. And another drink. And another drink. And every time someone stopped talking to Michael Stipe, we'd try to move in there, but he was a very popular man. Two hours of this. Two hours of this solid. And I'm hammered. And I still haven't spoken to Michael Stipe. <laughs> and we had to go on somewhere else. I can't remember where we were going. But we had to leave. And we had to, uh, we had to go on. But there's no way I'm, I'm leaving without meeting Michael Stipe from REM. Finally, someone walks away. We've got a small window. Nobody's talking. We've had about eight pints by this stage, right? We have a very tiny window of opportunity. We literally sprint up to Michael Stipe. My mate Sad Andy's first and he goes, Mr. Stipe, I, I just want to shake your hand and say I, I'm an enormous fan of you and your band R.E.M. R.E.M. was the most important band of my childhood. Uh, the lyrics to Orange Crush really changed my life. It, it is such an honour to meet you. It's an honour to witness this concert you did tonight. So basically, Andy's giving it the full gush, right? The full gush, right? And Michael Stipe goes, well, that, that's, that, that's very kind of you. It's very softly spoken, Michael Stipe. That's very kind of you. And Sir Andy goes, anyway, I'm terribly sorry to bother you, Mr. Stipe. I just, I just wanted to say, you know, hello and, uh, and, and, and how much you meant to me. Oh, that's, well, th thank you. That's very kind. Michael Stipe turns around and looks at me. Big, giant, hairy, Scottish guy. Very drunk. My tactic with Michael Stipe was a little bit different than Sir Andy's. Whereas Sir Andy was very polite and deferential. Oh, Mr. Stipe, it's, very, it's, it's really great to meet you. I've been such a, one, a fan of your band, R.E.M., and they've meant so much to me, and the lyrics to Orange Crush are just so intelligent. They're just wonderful. Me, I did instead. I went, fucking nice one, Stipey, and slapped him on the back in a big, manly way. Unfortunately, Michael Stipe from R.E.M. is not big or manly, and I literally sent Michael Stipe flying across the room into the bar. Have you any idea the damage a 380-pound Scottish moose can do to Michael Stipe by sending him flying into a bar? No, me neither, because I ran away. I ran out the room and I spent the whole night like scanning news reports on the radio because I was worried that I may have killed Michael Stipe. But I hadn't. Not yet. Not yet, Stipey. One day, one day, Stipey.